Well, thank you everybody for coming. And especially thank all these who's who of all of our state being here. You know, uh, a lot of them didn't have a lot of notice, but they came anyway. I got a hold of this fellow right here who's at his mom's house, and I don't know what he was doing, mowing grass or whatever, just a few minutes ago. And this kind man, we got a hold of him last night. And he came down to see me today, and, and uh, we're here. And we're here all in unison. We believe, really, in our hearts that uh, we know what we should stand for. And we should stand for goodness of all of our people. And we stand together. We stand together to try to take this state forward and take us to somewhere where we're struggling to go. Now, we've proven over and over how to be dead last. We got that down pat. And we're good at that. And we've proven that we're the blunt end of a lot of bad jokes. And you see, I really, truly, and all these people here as well, think that we don't need to be that. We need to be able to put our miners back to work. We need to be able to pay our teachers, in my opinion. We need to be able to not strangle our state into just oblivion. So, for that, I truly, from the bottom of my heart, I thank these people that are standing around me because this is Republicans and Democrats and independents. And the people that are here most and foremost are West Virginians. They're the people. You know, Bob Murray tells me of how he went in the mines every day or, or every week for 60 years. He tells a story that's so profound that every, every day that he went, he found the lowest stump, and he sat on that with the men up above him, and he'd talk to his men. That says everything, doesn't it? He doesn't stand up on a throne looking down, he sits on the lowest stump, talking to his men. That's all I want to do, sit on the lowest stump and talk to the people. You see, I ran for this office, and I don't want a thing. I don't want, in West Virginia terminology, nothing. Nothing. All I want is goodness for West Virginia. Now, let me tell you, there's a budget in front of me today and I thought a lot about this. I thought, you know, I've tried really hard for 60 days, and I've been all over the state, and it's taken a lot of energy. And I didn't get to go grouse something like I'd like to have gone. <laughs> and in all that, at the end of the day, we ended up nowhere. Now, if what we're going to do is still end up nowhere, then the decision is real simple. I can just take the budget as it is now and sign it and sign our death certificate as our state and then just say, I've done everything that I know I can do. And that's what we'd be doing. We'd be signing our death certificate. Well, you see, at the end of the day, if there's absolutely nowhere to go, that's what a lot of people would do. You know, I want to show you just how detrimental the budget that we have in front of us is. And I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to go right over here, okay? Y'all just hang with me. Where am I going? I want you to look what this does. The budget in front of me today 
kills our teachers' pay raise. It kills our veterans as far as exempting their retirement. It puts no money into tourism for the marketing of our state. It kills our tourism possibilities. It just absolutely harpoons Marshall and WVU. It kills our community and our technical colleges. It absolutely just harpoons all the four-year schools that we have left in our state. It fact, in fact, we'll end up having to close some of them. Think about it. It hurts kindergarten through, to, through the 12th grade. It nails our horses. It hurts our horses. Open this one. From the DHHR, think about what it does. It just absolutely abandons our seniors and our disabled. It takes 39.7 million out of Medicaid. Think about it. It takes $178 million out of DHHR. Federal funding, $178 million out of our state economy, gone. It, it defunds our Women's Commission. It cuts our state police by a million dollars. It cuts corrections by 7.6 million. It cuts public broadcasting by a million. And it does nothing, nothing, other than put a little money from a court settlement into trying to fix this terrible drug epidemic. Nothing. And here's what else it does. We had 48,000 jobs on the table, didn't we? They're gone. All of them, gone. 48,000 new jobs in our state, gone. Our ability to bond and have those jobs, gone. For all of you that thought, well, I'm gonna pay eight bucks and be able to go on the turnpikes for free, gone. As far as helping the coal miners, and to be able to come up with a benefit from severance tax when things are bad, for us to step up and help them when things are bad, and for them to step up and help all of us when things are tremendously good, gone. Same way with gas. It cuts $90 million out of our rainy day fund, which our rate holders have already told us repeatedly that if we go down further, they're going to downgrade us beyond belief. Gone, gone. There's $31.7 million of fake money in this deal right here. And fake money means this, I vetoed the dogs. Now, the dogs are in this, so if it's not fake money, the dogs are gone. And next year, our people tell us, with this program right here, we're going to end up with a $406 million deficit next year. Now that's what we got. And that's what's on the table right in front of me today. Now let me tell you, and I'm going to walk across this way, and I'm going to tell you just this. And I want you to listen, I want you to listen really loud and clear. There's something that goes on in this great building that I don't like. We seem to think it's okay to not tell the truth. We think we can just not tell the truth and that's just politics. Or we think we can play games and it's politics. And there's people here that are a bunch of junkies and they love it. They live for it. They think it's great stuff. But you know, at the end of all the games, there's a name. There's a name out there. There's a family out there and we're hurting them. 
We're hurting them with the games. Now, I'll tell you this, and this is as crazy as this may be. The Republicans passed this, and the Republicans turned right around and called and called and called and said, surely you're going to veto this, aren't you? Surely you're going to veto it because we don't want to own it. We don't want to go out into the world and say, we're for all that. We want you to veto it. And then you know what we can say? Is we didn't have anything to do with raising taxes. Now listen, it's just a game. It's just a game that doesn't mean anything. Let me take you back to Saturday night, just one second. Saturday night, we had a situation to where the great president of the Senate, Mitch Carmichael, had agreed with us on a way to go forward with something that was unbelievable. The opportunity, unbelievable, what it could do for our state. Unbelievable. Now, not only would we be able to stabilize the patient, but we would be able to put some tax reform in there as well from the standpoint of severance or from the standpoint of depleting our state income tax and move forward in a way that was great beyond belief. We would not have to, to have had to have done ever, any of that at all. We would have had, we would have had our 48,000 road jobs and we wouldn't have had to cut into any of this. None of it. From a Democrat standpoint, we would have gotten everything we wanted. From a Republican standpoint, we would have gotten the tax reform they wanted. It was the greatest deal in the history of the world. And you know what happened right off the get-go? Here's what happened. The first thing that came down to me is the Democrats are saying, they're not going to vote for it. I said, there ain't no way. There's no way. So I went flying up there and I said, what's going on? And they look at me and say stuff, well, you know, if we do this, we don't really like the Republicans getting this one up on us from the standpoint of the tax reform. So we don't really like that. It just got into this kind of situation. It got into, you were walking down the hall at a high school school and you looked over at Betty Lou and smiled and we didn't like that because you hadn't talked to us today. Now, on the other hand, if you want to go back to the Republican side, one step ten times worse was all of a sudden I was promised the bill was going to run and we were 100% behind it and here we go and nothing ever happened. Now, to me, these people, these people depend on this great body to quit doing this stuff. Now hear me out. Many people would say to me this. They would say, you'll never change this. That's just politics. You'll never change this. You won't have people become trustworthy. Now we can disagree, but we don't have to become telling lies, being childish, being a bunch of babies. We don't have to be treated in here like we're royalty when the people around us are suffering. We don't have to be a bunch of children that are in high school worried about Betty Lou. We don't have to be trying to one-up the other party all the time. We don't have to be this way. Now, if we're this way, you know what will get done? Nothing. Nothing's going to get done. Nothing. Now, you can call it what you want to call it, and maybe you can say, well, Jim is a dreamer. It'll never change. I don't think we'll make it perfect. You can call it that Jim wants to move from politics to Jimmy X. I don't care what you call it. 
But I am telling you, we've got to stop the nonsense that goes on here. We have got to get to trust. You have got to some way get to what this is right in front of you. The greatest of the greatest, Republicans and Democrats and independents and business and labor and educators and the people, the people. Now let me tell you, I can't be any more blunt than to just tell you this the way I see it. This is how I see it. We don't have a nothing burger today. And we don't have a mayonnaise sandwich today. We all should take ownership for this, but what we have is nothing more than a bunch of political bull you know what. <laughs> and for that very reason, I'm signing my veto on the budget bill. <laughs> and I hope and pray I hope and pray that the silliness will stop and we'll all do the right thing for these people that are here, for these people that are here, for this great state, and we'll stop the bull crap and we'll move to, if I don't know any other name, we'll move to Jimmy X and quit this political posturing that gets us nowhere. I would welcome the press to ask these great people that are here today any and every question that you choose to ask them. But for me, I've talked enough. God bless you. I'm out of here. Thank you. 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 Thank you.